If you're a photographer and you're trying to build a wedding photography business, this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through my six-figure roadmap, everything that you need to know to literally build a business from the ground up. Whether you've already got a wedding photography business or you're just starting out, have no portfolio whatsoever, we're gonna hit every single step to build a six-figure business in the next 12 months. So if that's for you, if you're interested, let's hit that intro, we'll get into it. All right, my name is Ryan. We're not gonna waste any time. If we have already met, great. If not, good to meet you. <laughs> I'm really excited to take you through this roadmap and I'm telling you right now, this is literally everything you need. I'm holding nothing back here in this presentation. Why? Because my goal is to give you the exact process you can use to build a six-figure business in the next 12 months. So literally holding nothing back. This isn't one of those videos that is gonna hit you with a punch at the end and say, hey, you need to buy my thing. Nope, my goal here is to give you the same amount of training here for free that other people are charging a thousand bucks for to buy their course when you see their Instagram ads, right? So there's no catch here. The goal is that if I give you a crazy amount of value, I know that a certain percentage of people are gonna raise their hand and say, hey Ryan, help me get there faster. Help me figure out this part of my situation. Help me get through this roadblock. So this is gonna be everything that you need to do to build a six-figure business, period. However, if you want help getting there faster and you really want to accelerate the results, then yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about coaching, look at the program, see if it's a fit for you. So the only thing I ask is that if this is helpful, you would do me a favor, pay it forward, like, comment. As you have questions, I would love to answer those. Leave those in the comment below and subscribe if you want more content like this. So bonus, if you do watch until the end of the video, I'm going to give you the chance to win a free one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. So if that's interesting, make sure you watch the whole thing from start to finish. Without further ado, let's get into it. And the first thing you should probably know is why should you listen to me? You might be wondering, who is this guy? What's he talking about? Has he any right to tell you what to do? And fair enough. So I was pretty much in your situation right now at some point in the past, because uh, I started as a kid in college trying to pay for my tuition doing photography. And so I started shooting for uh, different studios in Sydney at the time I was in Australia studying. And I had the chance to shoot for a bunch of different studios and start my own business there. And I learned a lot of things the hard way <laughs> by doing it wrong over and over and over again until eventually I figured something out. And so my goal is to actually kind of share you my process here, how I went over the last 10 years building four businesses in three different countries. So I started in Sydney, then I moved to Canada, then I moved to the States, then I moved back to Canada. And I just had to redo this process several times. And so I got pretty good at it <laughs> and figuring out what worked, what didn't, and how you can actually accelerate the results along the way. In the process, I built up a studio to a team of four and got to number one for Google search in my city for wedding photographers. And yeah, I'm from Canada, so you know I'm a nice guy. <laughs> So yeah, helped. Uh, I started Signature Edits about five years ago to help photographers. So the basic idea was, you know, as I'm learning things, let's share this. And so as I was running into diff difficulties and discovering things, I started making videos. These took off and um, yeah, the rest is kind of history. Helped a lot of people and I'm hoping you're the next that I have the chance to help. So that's pretty much it. In terms of actually coaching other photographers and helping other people walk the talk kind of thing, I have helped photographers get 10 times or more on their return on investment on ads which we're gonna talk about today. Uh, I've helped photographers go from zero to page one in Google in as little as four weeks. And I've also helped photographers triple their bookings while doubling their prices. So if any of that sounds interesting, that is why listen to me, and that's kind of what we're gonna be getting into today. So with all that said, here's what we're covering. There's a mountain here. It's gonna be talking about building a brand, decommoditizing, creating a world-class incredible portfolio, how you can do that in months instead of years, mm -hmm. leveraging sneaky production strategies to turbocharge your shoots and your networking, generating a mountain of kick-ass social proof uh, because we really want your business to stand out. And that's the hardest part of getting started is there's so many photographers out there that it can be really, really tough to get those first few shoots to scale up, to get more leads, to stand out from the crowd. And that's what all of this comes down to is how do we make you stand out? How do we get you more leads? How do we help you make more sales? So yeah, we're going to talk about all of this, launching a website, um, getting bookings, establishing long-term stability, talking about SEO and referral partnerships. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's get started, right? If you do have questions, leave them in the comments below. The first thing we're talking about is building a brand and decommoditizing your photography. So you need to stop commoditizing yourself so that you can stop competing and actually charge what you like. When all else is equal, your customer will decide on price. So if you have two identical services, all that someone has left to kind of compare with is the price. Which one costs more, which one costs less. And so don't be equal. <laughs> don't be identical. That's what we need to figure out today. And this quote was from myself. So the lesson of this day is quote yourself as much as possible, obviously. And second, <laughs> make sure that you're differentiating yourself. And I'm going to show you a story of two handbags. The first is a handbag from Target. Okay. So if I were to zoom in here on these beautiful, beautiful bags, 
How do they look to you? They all look pretty much the same. They're about the same quality, the same size, similar materials, similar designs, right? They're unexceptional. That's what you get when you go to Target. You get decent bags, but they're going to be decent quality, decent price, decent design. And you're going to kind of say, ah, oh, which do I like the most? And you're going to go with one of them and that'll be that. Notice how big the price stickers are on these bags, because at the end of the day, the main factor in your decision is how much does it cost and which of these is kind of the best for what I've got to spend. Now let's compare that to another type of bag. These are Gucci bags in a Gucci store. Now, what do you notice is different about this store experience compared to this store experience? Now, if you have eyes, which I hope you do, you're going to notice the layout is very, very different. This is just a ton of products stacked on one another. This is like entering a super high class luxury hotel or a very nice, fancy penthouse apartment. It's more of a living room than it is a store, right? And so these bags, they're all ultra expensive. They're beautifully arranged. They use the best materials that money can buy. They're meticulously thought out, like every portion of this store, the lighting, the positioning, everything has been thought out. And it's served to you when you actually enter, you're going to get served by a staff member who says, hey, can I get you a glass of water? Take a seat. What are you looking for today? And they're going to be an expert on every single bag. Let me tell you about this bag. Let me tell you about the finishes. Let me tell you about the design. Let me tell you about how it was stitched, how it was put together. It's a limited production run from this year's catalog, right? Um, you sip on your ice cold beverage. If you're a really high paying customer, they'll take you into a private room and give you that VIP experience. Very, very different process compared to shopping here. So why am I talking about this? Well, most importantly of all, these bags <laughs> are not what Gucci is selling. Gucci is selling a lifestyle. They're selling an experience. They're selling the fact that you get treated as a VIP and they expect you to buy like a VIP and you deserve the best. So one of the things you might hear <laughs> if you have a girlfriend like me is that girlfriends don't buy Gucci. They actually invest in Gucci. They invest in an heirloom because it's going to go up in value. I'll have it forever. Let's buy quality. That is the difference between a Gucci bag and a Target bag. Now, how does this apply to your photography? Well, you don't sell photos. That's the biggest thing. And we're starting here before I get into the tactics is that you need to understand your photography is not about the pixels on the screen that somebody is actually downloading. Your photography is about capturing moments, creating an experience, creating an investment, capturing memories forever, understanding what actually matters to the customer because it's not the photos you're selling. It's the experience. It's the reason they're buying those photos. So you need to ask yourself at the very start of this, when you're building your business, who's that target client and what matters to them? What is really important, right? Is it price? Because probably you don't want to be that photographer <laughs> that your clients are only concerned about what is the cheapest I can get this done for. You want the client who's actually after this kind of experience. It's going to be much more fun, much easier to scale and get to that six figure mark. So with all that said, you need to ask yourself some questions. Who is your target customer? What do they love? What do they hate? What do they do for fun? Where are they getting married? What is their biggest desire when it comes to their wedding? What's their budget? How much do they make in a year? What do they do for work? Where do they shop already? And what brands are they already raving fans of? And when you know this stuff and you say, okay, my target customer shops at Gucci, what can I learn from this brand? My target customer hates this brand. What can I learn not to do from that brand? You know, when we actually compare these things, you can start making your marketing so much more effective. So after that, build that brand. Easy, right? So let's talk about how we do that. We need to get specific. What is the specific type of photography you do for the specific person you serve? Because the biggest thing that will hold you back when you start a photography business, or if you're struggling in your photography to stand out, is trying to do everything for everybody. And you post all this random work, all sorts of styles, all sorts of edits, all sorts of photos. And... It really appeals to nobody because it's trying to appeal to everybody, right? So it's not just like I do wedding photography in Boise. Everybody does wedding photography in Boise if they live in Boise. But I do luxury weddings with soul for couples who want timeless classic imagery while having a great time. Very different service here versus this. And which do you think as a person who is looking for a more luxurious luxurious <laughs> experience, which would you be looking for? Just a wedding photographer or someone who's expertise is in this area and that's what they do. Okay. So hopefully this is making sense so far. If it is, leave it in the comments. Who's your target avatar? Let me know. So how do we create a world-class brand and a portfolio in months instead of years? Because that's the biggest problem that we're going to have starting out or building your business is you don't want it to take years and years and years to get this stuff together. And if you want to build the Gucci store with the Gucci experience, how do you do that if you need the portfolio, but you can't get the portfolio until you get the weddings, right? So how do we do that? Let's talk. Here's in three simple steps how to build a dream portfolio. The first thing you need to do is actually go to Instagram, 
go to some big accounts that are sharing the work of lots of photographers, okay? So for example, if you went to Visco, if you went to Tribe Archipelago, if you went to Looks Like Film, you can go to these different Instagram accounts. And once you go there, I want you to actually go through the work and find the work that resonates with you. So let's go to Looks Like Film. Now they've got tons of different work on here and this style might appeal to you, might not. Let's say that I really like this one, but I don't like that one. Okay, go through and actually figure out what your dream customer is looking for and what kind of work resonates with you the most. Now this, this matters. You need to have stuff that one, you want to do and want to shoot and two, that your dream customer is actually interested in, right? Because if a luxurious client isn't interested in a certain style and all you shoot in is that style, you will never attract a luxurious client, right? So just make sure those two things align. At the end of the day, it's important you love what you do. So pick a niche that actually aligns with that and go from there. So let's say that I really love this shot, I really love this shot. Go through and take some screenshots. Shift Command 4 on a Mac, if that's your vibe. And we're just gonna screenshot all the work that really resonates with us, okay? So let's just go through, we'll grab a couple of screenshots. Easy peasy. And I want you to go through and do this with 100, 200 images. And from there, you're gonna actually open up Canva or open up Photoshop, it really doesn't matter, and make a template and basically just make a pretend Instagram grid. So what I can do here is zoom out with command minus sign on my keyboard. I can take a screenshot of this, right? Go into Canva and make yourself an Instagram feed with all the work that really spoke to you. That's what I want you to do is just, the first thing we need to do to build that dream portfolio is to actually have it in front of us. What is it we're actually going for? What is the cohesive look that our style is going to be all about when it comes to the edits, the poses, the locations, the expressions on the couple's face, the type of work we're doing. Once you have this stuff, life becomes so much easier because now you have a direction to go in and now you can plan out some shoots to actually create this kind of work. Now, here's something I want you to notice about this. It doesn't matter what photographer you look at. Let's say um, Sarah Martin Photo Artistry. Beautiful shot, okay? If we were to go through her feed, I want you to notice something. This is one picture here of one couple, another picture of one couple, another of one couple, all right? So to build an amazing portfolio, you don't necessarily have to have a carousel reel with 100 photos of every single shoot. All you really need, if we're strategic about this, instead of, taking month, <laughs> instead of taking years, we take months, is what we need is probably, I don't know, three scrolls worth of images. So if each scroll is nine images, we need 27 or so images that really showcase the amazing work we wanna create. And they don't have to be carousels. We just need 27 individual images of 27 individual couples. And that sounds like a lot, <laughs> but it's a whole lot less than having to go through and actually shoot 27 weddings, right? You don't need to do that. All you need is just to recreate some of these shots to showcase what you are capable of. And this is really key. Yes, you need the experience eventually, but to get started, what you really need is just a portfolio that kind of shows your skill level, what you're capable of producing in this environment. All right, so you're gonna do that. Create this big, beautiful feed that you wanna to aspire to create. Then we're gonna go through and we're gonna strategically build this dream portfolio. And yeah, you can't organize luxury weddings. If you're going through and you're like, okay, well, this would require me to travel to the ocean and this would require me to travel to a castle somewhere and this would require me to be in Ireland. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you can actually budget to do some of these shoots in some of these locations, but you don't have to, right? We can get smart about this and be strategic. So first off, venues in your area or venues abroad, oftentimes they're open to styled shoots if you're literally doing all the work for them and you do it during the week. So don't necessarily assume you can't do this. The second thing is that if you were to actually go ahead and say, okay, if I zoom in here, how can I get creative? This doesn't require an amazing location. Neither does that, neither does that. Most of the work on Sarah's page at least doesn't necessarily require you to do a whole lot of traveling. Some might in which case we need to be strategic about getting some of that if you're committed to doing elopements. But look at this, this could be the exact same location, just shot in two different ways. And I think that's actually two, the same couple. So again, by being strategic, by doing a hat and by shooting at night versus shooting in the day, she kind of turned one shoot into two in terms of her portfolio at least, right? So this might mean spending a little money, going on a trip, planning something and actually putting this together. But it's very, very possible to do this quickly and easily compared to years of shooting. That's what I'm trying to get at, okay? So how can you creatively pull this off? Especially if you can find shots that don't depend on the background as much. It's more about the lighting and about the expression and about the vibe. Because the truth is, if you can actually pull off an amazing expression and vibe and like moment in one area and the lighting is great and the color is great and the background's kind of blown out, people can picture, oh, this 
person would be amazing doing this in Australia, or they'd be amazing doing this in Ireland. You, you don't necessarily have to show the destination as long as you can show the work and the style is good and will fit that destination. Okay, so your goal is a dream portfolio. We don't want 100 full shoots. What we want is like 40 to 60 amazing, individual, beautiful photos that showcase what you're really capable of. That's how we do it. So we're gonna leverage strategic production to turbocharge your shoots. So what do I mean by this? Being strategic, exactly what we talked about, this example right here. Okay, so let's go through and let's just say we're gonna find all the photos that look like they're from a similar place that we could probably kind of create in the same spot without much traveling. That would be this one, this one, this one, this we could probably pull off in the same shoot. This one definitely, this one, anything that's not super background dependent will be the first things you try and pin. The next thing will be thinking of locations that if you point the camera this way, it's the ocean. If you point the camera this way, it's whatever, forest, grassland, stuff like that. So by doing this and scheduling two shoots at the same time or back to back, we could do one shoot ocean side and capture that one portfolio image or a couple of portfolio images. Because remember, it's not a full shoot. We just need one image. And then we turn around and we shoot in the other direction and bam, there's our second image, okay? That's strategic production. So if a kick-ass portfolio takes most people 10 years, don't do what most people did. <laughs> you need to think about this different and kind of disconnect your brain from the notion that in order to build a portfolio, you have to do full shoots. What we want to do is like micro shoots to really bypass and speed up this process. You can't get around having an amazing portfolio like that. You can't sneak around. You need to have it to land the bookings. However, you can get around having to shoot 100 weddings to get that initial portfolio. And you can also bypass all the years of shooting really crappy weddings that you don't really want to attract. You can bypass that by doing more style shoots and actually putting in the legwork here and spending some time shooting for free, traveling if you need to, renting Airbnbs in amazing locations if that's the best option for where you are, right? So reverse engineer the process. First principles thinking basically just says, okay, how can we make this as simple as possible? That's not really what first principles thinking is. However, it's not assuming anything going in. You say, okay, what I need is amazing photos. That doesn't necessarily mean I have to do all these shoots, right? How can I get amazing photos without doing the shoots? You start asking different questions, you'll get different answers. Now, multiple locations without multiple logistics. All we have to do is say, okay, how can we group these shots together and pull off multiple locations at the same time without really traveling far? Maybe we can just go down the street to another, another spot. There's a farm here and then up the street is a really old, beautiful heritage home and we can do another indoor shoot with a couple there that night. That kind of thing. Work smarter, not harder. That's the basic principle here. So let's move on because I think you're kind of getting where I'm going with this. If you were to hypothetically schedule a shoot every Saturday for the next five weeks, and each of these shoots, you said, all right, my goal here is to have three couples come out on this day. I'm going to have one at 8 a.m., one at 10 a.m., one at 12 a.m., 12 a.m., 12 p.m., whatever, right? You, you do three per day. And I'm going to have it all at the same location or at least within 10 or 20 minutes drive of one another. And if you did that, five Saturdays, three couples times five, that would be 15 shoots. And if each couple you were able to get multiple looks, maybe change the outfits, add an accessory, something like that, okay, we've got our 40 or 50 photos, done. And if we actually include other vendors, so this is another important part I should talk about. Don't settle for 24 hours a day, create 72. Now, what do I mean by this? Because you've only got 24 hours in a day. Well, yeah, you do if you're working by yourself. But here's the thing, if you take one person, that's you, that's 24 hours. But if you take two people, say you and a wedding planner or you and a florist or you and a venue designer, whatever. Now we've got 48 hours in a day. I can't type. <laughs> you get the point. If we have three people on your team, all of a sudden you've got a lot more hours in the day that you can get a lot more done. So think smarter, work smarter, not harder. Now, if you're getting something out of this, do me a favor, leave a comment below. What is the main takeaway you're getting from this? And are you getting any ideas here? All right. Now let's talk about generating social proof because once we have the portfolio, yeah, that's great, but now we need some social proof. People actually saying, yeah, this guy's worth working with. This girl's worth working with. I trust her. She was awesome. That kind of thing. How do we do that? And most importantly, how do we stand out and really not just generate some social proof, but a ton so that we mop the floor with the competition? Well, the first thing is obviously, if we were scheduling those five shoots with three couples per weekend for five weekends, okay, if each couple leaves a review, that's gonna be 30 reviews, bam. That's more reviews than most couples, most couples, most wedding photographers even bother to get. So start actually thinking about this because at the end of the day, when we look at two different listings, say on Amazon, which of these would you choose? The one with 36 ratings or the one with 7,512 ratings? Even though this one has a slightly lower review, 
and is what 50% higher price. I personally would go with this one. Why? Because more people have said, yeah, this is a great product. So how can we do that with your business? We need to crack the code on social proof. So as I said, as you're doing shoots, especially if you're shooting for free, you just say, hey, I'll do this shoot for free for you guys and building portfolio. But the number one thing I'd ask, the only thing I'd ask really is that you both leave a review so that at the end of this, there's two reviews for my website to help me build my business. How does that sound? Set the expectation up front, have that conversation and you will get the reviews. The second thing you can do is work from circles of influence. So what I mean by this is, first off, there's you. <laughs> you could review your business if you want. Is that gonna convince anyone to hire you? No, but it's one more review on Google. Now the next thing you can do, next circle of influence would be your friends, your family, <laughs> the people in your really intimate circle, and then your friends, then your kind of associates, then your work coworkers, then your friends of friends, right? And we work from the inside out. Most of the time when people actually crack their social circles like this, you can get 20, 30 reviews just by going through all these people and sending them a message and saying, hey, I know this is random, but I have this dream to really build my business. And I know I never shot photos for you. By the way, if you're interested, be happy to. But would you be willing to just leave me a really quick review just about me as a person? And then that way I have something to start my business. And as it grows, I'll obviously replace it with better reviews from actual clients. Would you do that for me? And you'll be amazed at the results you get just by asking. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but trust me, people aren't going to be like, shame on you. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> they will say yes, and they will do it or they won't do it. That's the worst that's going to happen. Now, I already talked about this. You want to pre-frame the expectations. So if you're working with a couple, if you're working with vendors, every time that you do a shoot, you should be saying to every single person, hey, at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to leave me a review and I will be happy to give you a review and do whatever I can for you. Does that sound good? Set that up up front, over deliver every single time, and then collect those testimonials for every single person that you work for and work with. And then the last thing is here, we want to start entering your images and contests and share with at least 100 blogs. So as we're doing these shoots, building the dream portfolio, start tagging other blogs. Tag at looks like film, tag tribe archipelago, find the blogs and the different Instagram accounts that actually feature content that aligns with the kind of work you're producing and start submitting to them. This could be just literally tagging them on Instagram, but it could also be reaching out and saying, hey, got this shoot, would love you to check it out. The easiest thing you could do would be to go to two, two bright lights. Dot com, and you can create an account there and submit to a whole bunch of magazines like all at once. Very, very cool product. All right. Now, how do we decimate the competition? One, we drown them in quantity. If they have 10 reviews and we have 200, who are you going to go with? Next thing, we want to drown them in quality. So this is going to take some time, but if we are asking the right questions, you will get better reviews. So you say to people, hey, do me a huge favor, write a review for me. And what I would love the most is answer these questions for me. What really stood out to you about my work? Why would you recommend me over other photographers? What was the best part about working for me and working for me, <laughs> working with me? And tell me one story or share a quick story about actually that experience or your experience with me as a person. And if you have these more quality reviews, longer reviews that go into depth about why you're so great, what makes you different, why people should choose you, what would you say to somebody who's considering my services? That will do a large huge job of actually drowning them in quality. And the last thing is drown them in credibility. So let's just say that the president of the United States recommends you for a job versus Vern, who is your neighbor down the street. <laughs> who is going to be worth more in terms of credibility? Now with the current president, maybe you think that may or may not be more credible, but my point is hopefully getting across the more credible the person writing the review for you and giving you an endorsement, the better. So that's why we want to get featured on blogs. We want to get reviews. We want to get featured in publications. We want to do all this stuff so that we have more credibility than anybody else and we stand out. Not just stand out, but decimate. Now, after you've done all this, it's time to release your portfolio into the wild <laughs> without getting eating, eaten alive. Because that is the problem with releasing things into the, the wild. So here's the super simple recipe for crushing it on social media and building out a kick-ass feed. Number one, plan out your feed. <laughs> so don't just post things randomly, but actually plan it out with all your new hella bala images. I want you to start by scheduling planning software. Use scheduling software like Metricool. So this is a piece of software you can actually sign up for totally free, and you can actually build out your feed, preview it in advance, write all the captions, have it auto-scheduled, auto-post. That's great. Build out the feed. 
Next thing is we want to connect with your captions. Your captions aren't just like, hey, cool shot or great shoot this weekend. That's an opportunity there for you to tell the story behind the images, to give the behind the scenes of like what it was like working with this couple. What was so great about this moment? How you captured this moment? Your favorite thing about this couple's story. When people see that stuff and you actually share you and act like a human instead of a business, you're going to get a lot more connection. It's an opportunity to write to your friends. Your customers are not customers. <laughs> They're not dollar signs. They are people. Now, after that, you can also share your testimonials and reviews in the carousel of that shoot. So you can have the shoot, have that amazing image, and then have a carousel. Next one is just that amazing testimonial from the couple. If you do that with every single one, how much more impactful is it going to be? Next, being strategic with your hashtags. So we want to use location-specific keywords, and specific keywords, not generic ones. So not wedding photography, but Brooklyn wedding photography. Or even better yet, I don't know any specific areas in Brooklyn, but you can tag the specific area. And hashtag Brooklyn Bakery. <laughs> hashtag Brooklyn Bakery engagement. Hashtag Brooklyn engagement session. Versus engagement photography, love, couple. <laughs> not going to be as helpful. You can get buried in your feed. Next, I want you to tag relevant accounts. So what does this mean? If an account is relevant, it's the venue you shot at. It's the vendors that you worked with. Tag your clients. Um, tag the other vendors that you worked with. Make them collaborators on the post so that your post shows up on their feed, not just on their tagged feed. And then post your 40 images. Schedule them to repeat. This is a little bit weird, <laughs> but essentially what we want to do is actually schedule your first 40 images and then schedule them to repeat again over the next three months. And you're gonna splash in new stuff as you're shooting it. But the key thing here is I want you to stay at the top of the discover feed for all these different hashtags. And you can switch the hashtags and different mentions every single time. So you can tag different publications, you can do all this awesome stuff, but the main thing is we wanna keep that Instagram feed fresh and always posting so you're popping up again and again and again. You have more discoverability than if you only post once a week or once every month. All right, and that's my super recipe. Now, the real growth hack here, <laughs> What I want you to do is boost your best performing posts. So at first, when you have zero followers, just get all the posts up there so you have that initial grid, right? Like a couple of scrolls worth of images. After that, start boosting posts that are performing better. And that's the easiest way to gain followers and traction. And why is that? Because as you start posting, initially on Instagram, not many people see you. And the growth is very, very slow. So the easiest way we can speed this up is just pay Instagram and do the thing that 99% of photographers aren't willing to do, which is spend a little money to actually get out there and accelerate your growth. And don't do this with every post. Do it with your best performing posts. Look at the ones that are already working, already getting you comments and follows and stuff like that. Those are the ones you want to boost with five bucks here, 10 bucks there, right? Just look at this as an investment. You are watering the seed. You're growing this thing. You have to have some followers before you can have a lot of credibility on your social account. So that would be my advice there. Now, mission critical, this is like super important and I have to emphasize this again. Your work, if you want to build a six-figure business, it has to be good. You cannot build a six-figure business on mediocre work. And so if the work isn't up to snuff, if you've made your dream board from other photographers and then you look at your work and it's not on par with theirs, you need to grow. You need to work on that. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you should throw in the towel. It just means that you need to keep shooting and shooting and shooting because you're going to get better over time. Keep learning, keep growing. And the fastest way you're gonna shoot, sorry, learn, is by shooting, not by watching YouTube videos like this one over and over and over again every single day. What you need to do is watch one video, put into practice, actually apply what you learn, and then after you've learned that and applied it, apply it some more. And then after you've done that, apply it some more. And then after you've done that and truly mastered it, then watch another video, okay? Your work must be exceptional, and the fastest way to do that is actually just to do more work. So. Let's talk about launching a website. So you got your Instagram up, you built your portfolio, you've got social proof, things are really moving along. What do we do here? And there's a reason that I haven't started with the website, right? Because the thing that matters most is your portfolio and then getting out there into the world and having some social proof. You don't need a website to build a six-figure business. In fact, you might find you're already getting inquiries, already getting bookings by this stage. If the work is good enough and you're doing a good job with your hashtags, you're posting regularly, you have the social proof, you will get booking requests just like that. So how do we build a website once we're ready? This is really key. Don't skip this first three steps. First, we need to build the brand, get the portfolio, build the testimonials, get the reviews, get featured, start tagging people, build out the social account. Then, okay, now we can build a website. So how do we do this in an afternoon, not months and months and months, for under 200 bucks? The easiest solution right now, at least at the time of recording this video, is just use Pixie Set. Now, Pixie Set is a website platform that kind of has it all. It has the ability to deliver galleries to your clients. It has the ability to actually have one-click booking options. You can send contracts here. You can do all sorts of things. But the thing I want you to use it to start with is honestly just building a website. And there is even a free option that the first like 100 image website you post 
That's 100% free to set up. So why not? Get started on Pixie Set. I will leave a link below. This isn't an affiliate thing. I'm not getting a commission on here. I think you get a small discount. I get like five bucks, literally. So it's not like I'm being sponsored here. It's just, this is where I'm directing all my clients because it's so easy. You can do it in an afternoon and get a great result. That's why I'm recommending it. Feel free to use whatever you want. So with that said, set it up on Pixie Set. And here's exactly what you need. You can screenshot this, just pause. I'm not gonna make it complicated for you because it doesn't need to be complicated. The main thing that's gonna grow your business is not having a super fancy website. That's what I need to get across to you. Start basic, you can always redesign it. Once you're making lots of money, hire someone to design it and have a really cool, fancy, flashy website. I invite you. But at first, all you need is this. You need an amazing banner image so when people first load your website, they're like, wow, this is beautiful. Okay, that's all you need. You do not need to overcomplicate it. It doesn't have to be a banner image, like a big photo. If you want, you can come up with a different design. But it's just, you wanna make a first impression that's like, this is awesome. This is my person. That's what you want. Just like when you walk into a Louis Vuitton store, you're gonna say, wow, this is an amazing place. Next, we wanna have a large image, single gallery. What do I mean by that? Well, picture this presentation as if it were a gallery with lots of different photos. You just want easy peasy. There's like photos in the middle, one photo at a time, arrow, arrow. Why are we doing that instead of like a big complicated thing? Because I want people to be able to go to your site and scroll through the different work one photo at a time. Not 100 photos at a time or five photos at a time, so it takes them like 10 seconds to get through the whole thing. We want them to look at every single photo individually because you worked hard on these and it's gonna feel like a larger portfolio by doing it this way than having a small little grid with a bunch of different images. The other thing is most people are viewing your website on mobile. So the thing is, if you're on a tiny little mobile screen and they have like a row of three images coming down here, they're not gonna be able to see anything. So make one large image gallery that shows all the photos right there. Have an about you section. And this can all be on one page, like literally the homepage. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You can change it later. Make an about section that connects. How do you do that? You share yourself as a person. Have a photo of you that if you saw it, you would say, I wanna be that guy's friend. I wanna be that girl's friend. I wanna connect with her. She seems really cool. Be smiling, be happy, be approachable. <laughs> that's the kind of thing we're trying to connect with our audience. So whatever it is that they connect with, that's what we wanna showcase. Don't be cold and aloof. Don't be a business. Don't hide behind your website. You wanna have you in the website because that's the only thing that's different about your photos versus everybody else's is the person who's behind the scenes taking those photos. Put on your featured badges that we've worked hard to get. We've reached out to posts. We've got, we've reached out to posts. We've reached out to blogs with our posts. We have shared and tagged other places and hopefully we've been reshared. Now we can use some of their logos. That's what we want to have on there. And then have your starting at prices. So you don't have to worry about your pricing too much when you're starting as a photographer. You can honestly just pick a number that you're happy to shoot for for the day. So wedding starting at 1600 bucks, wedding starting at 2000, wedding starting at 3000. This is all going to go just by the quality of your work. Honestly, if your work is on par with other phot photographers charging about the same amount, you can probably charge that much. Even if you don't have a ton of experience per se, but the actual work is good. You can do that. Um, but I like to put starting at, not the full prices, for two reasons. One, then when you get on the call, you can figure out what they want and then price around that. And two, later on, you can think about this after you start getting inquiries. Don't get super bogged down in creating packages before you've gotten a single inquiry. It just doesn't make sense. So put a starting at, like wedding starting at 1200 bucks. What's the cheapest you would shoot a wedding for? Start there. After that, make sure you fill that site up with those raving testimonials. Testimonial, 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 review, 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 review. That's the idea. We want people to be overwhelmed with, holy crap, this person has done a lot of amazing things for a lot of people, and yeah, they all seem to love him or her. And lastly, we want to make sure we have a contact form. And at the end of that contact form, this is really important, put a booking call, book a call redirect. So after they submit their form, this is like a top secret hack that literally clients pay me thousands of dollars and this is what I go through with them. So once they submit that form, have it redirect to a different page and that page is going to have a book call button right away. And then that way you're going to get a lot more calls booked because so many people submit the form. It's like, oh, sweet, this is easy. Your goal here is to make everything easy, exactly what your client needs. So we should probably have exactly what they need instead of what you need. That's what the website's about. That's it. Literally, it can be one page. So after you got the website, then it's time to start getting leads. But before we do that, <laughs> if this is helpful, if you have questions, let's take a quick break because I can go a little bit fast. I want you to write those in the comments below. Like, how are you finding this so far? What is the first thing you need to do? What stage of this business are you at? What haven't I covered? What did I go past too quickly? Let me know. I'll make sure to answer every single comment, every single question that's in here. I want to help you. That's my goal here is so much value that you say, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. I can actually apply this, run with it. And once you start getting results, I'll help you speed that, speed that up. So let's talk infinite money booking glitch. 
This is the glitch I'm gonna show you that can generate five to 10 clients per week. Client calls, I should say. What's a client call? Somebody reaches out, hey, interested in your photos. You set up a meeting and you chat them through, see if they want a book. That's the idea. Now, it's right under your nose, I promise you. This is not gonna be anything revelatory. What is it? Well, we're gonna scale and use ads to get clients. I know, you're saying, Ryan, I want the tactics. Show me specifically what it is I need to do. I will. <laughs> Essentially, what you need to do is just test things until you figure out what works and then do more of that <laughs> in a nutshell. And I know before you like leave this video and click away and say that was a waste of time, it sounds simple, but it's hard. I know. Here's an example. What we want to do is do something that people actually want and we want to give that away. Whether it's a giveaway of a session, we've got a promo where it's like, hey, $300 voucher, a valuable resource. This is the guide that all newborn mothers should have in the first 48 hours. Um, whatever, seven things that you should do for your newborn in the first week you take her home from the hospital, right? Now, those are not wedding valuable resources. Maybe a wedding valuable resource would be, here's a list of all the best locations in whatever area you're in. Here's the best hot dog vendors in Chicago. Here's 10 date ideas to do when you first get engaged, something like that, right? And then we give away this resource, this session, this freebie, whatever, and we test it and get people to fill out a form in return for giving them that thing. After they get that thing, sweet, we can reach out to them and say, hey, how are you liking the thing? Hey, I'd love to schedule that session that you entered to win. Hey, let's jump on a call. And you do that enough times with enough people, you'll get on calls. And after you get on calls, then you can actually start booking some of these clients. And I hate to like make it sound super easy. I know you're like, Ryan, show me exactly what it is I need to do. You can figure it out. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube. You can look this up. Obviously, if we worked one-on-one, -on -one, I would show you and we go through, <laughs> I don't have enough time to go like 10 hours on this, but hopefully this gives you the idea. The basic idea is we're giving something of value that people want, and then we're going to test and revise that ad and say, okay, this worked great. What if I switch out the image? This worked great. What if I change out the promo? This worked great. What if I tried giving away this thing instead of that thing? And you do that until you find something that works. Now, if I'm working with my clients, obviously the nice part is I have a lot of different clients who are testing a lot of different things. And so I know what works, what doesn't, what's working better here, I can take and apply over there. You don't have the ability to do that unless you work with me. However, you can still do this and split test different ads. And it's as simple as just starting by boosting a post. Make a post, it's a giveaway, and boost that post by five, 10 bucks a day. And just see what kind of results you get. Constant, never-ending improvement. That's the key. You make something, you measure it, you make an adjustment, you measure it, and you just keep incrementally getting better and better to get the results you need. That's as simple as I can make it. And I know, I know you're like, Ryan, it's so scary and such a big deal and I don't wanna lose thousands of dollars. Then don't spend thousands of dollars. Just look at this like an investment. You're paying to learn. You're paying to go to school. You're not wasting money. You spent 10 bucks to learn what didn't work. And then you do it again, you spent 10 bucks and it worked a little bit better. You do it again, spend 10 bucks. Okay, we're 30 bucks in, I've, I've learned this lesson and this lesson and this lesson. Now let's try number four, try number five. Eventually you'll get there, I promise. If you want to help with this, contact me. We can talk about that. Okay, let's talk about long-term stability with SEO and referral partnerships. Because the truth is, once you get these ads rolling in, it becomes a matter of like, okay, we can scale this as far as we want. We just spend more and more and more until we get all the client calls we want. But eventually, you might be sick of giving away free photo shoots. You might want something that's a little bit more sustainable in the long term. You don't want to spend money on ads. At the same time as you're running ads, what you can start doing is working on your SEO. So you're going to show up in Google and working on your referral partnerships. Those are basically the three ways you can get clients. One, ads. Two, SEO. Three, referrals from past clients who are super happy with you and referrals from vendors that you work with in the industry. So how do we do that? First off, let me give you everything you need to know about SEO in like two minutes-ish. <laughs> so this is the 20% that will give you 80% of the results. That's the Pareto principle. So there's this mathematician in Italy, like in the 1700s, maybe it was a different time, I don't know. The point is, he was looking out on these Italian vineyards and he noticed something really interesting. It was something like 80% of the vineyards produced 20% of the grapes and 20% of the vineyards produced 80% of the grapes. And then he looked at the rich people in the town and he said, oh, this is interesting. 80% of these people have no money and 20% have most of the money. And so it turns out that as you look in nature, in the world around us, things typically tend to fall into these weird different categories where it's like 20% has 80% of the results, 80% has 20% of the results. But the point is we need to focus on that 20% because if we put all our effort into that 20% instead of the other 80% that doesn't really work so well, we're gonna get much better results much more quickly. So here's exactly what you need to do with your SEO. First off, you need Google reviews. You need a Google page, start getting lots of reviews. That's the number one thing. 
Next, you need to optimize your map profile. So make sure your profile is actually optimized to show up in Google. You can do a quick little YouTube search, figure a lot of this stuff out. Uh, three, your homepage text should have the same keywords that you want to show up for in search. So if you want to search up, search, if you want to show up for LA wedding photographer, which would be very compli complicated and competitive because it's a very large city, I'd probably go for a smaller keyword, but let's say you do. You need to make sure that your website right on the homepage has LA wedding photographer on it. That's the basic idea here is you want to have text in your website, particularly on the homepage for what you want to rank for in the homepage on other pages for what you rank for, for other pages. So I do have an SEO course. If you're interested, you can grab it at signatureedits.com and it will go like in depth on all of this stuff. Um, but that's the basics. Okay. Now, basically Google looks at the text on your website. They see what it's about and that's how you start ranking for things. Now, the next thing you need to do is start writing some blog posts and give Google lots of text to see and other related terms to rank for. So like I said, if you're in LA, you're trying to build a photography business, SEO is going to be really, really hard because there's so many photographers who've been doing this for so long and are working really hard on SEO. So what do you do? Instead of focusing on ranking for LA wedding photographer, maybe you choose a very small district like Irvine wedding photographer and you go for that first. And from there, it's like, okay, we can search and have different pages within our website where it's like, here's a blog of all the best places to propose in Irvine. Here's a blog of the best places to get engaged or for an engagement shoot in Irvine. Here's the best wedding florists in Irvine. And you make these different posts and all of a sudden your website starts popping up in Google for different things. And Google as a whole can see, oh, this person's in Irvine. They're in wedding photography. Okay, sweet. This is where they kind of slot in when it comes to Google search and when I should show this person. That's the basic gist of it. The last thing is backlights, backlights, <laughs> backlinks from relevant sites and high ranking sites. So think of it like a popularity contest and Google basically says, okay, who do I trust the most? And trust comes from who's vouching for you, how long you've been around, um, basically how trustworthy you look on the surface. Google's doing the same thing. And so someone vouching for you on Google is someone giving you a link and saying, this guy's a great wedding photographer. You should check him out. And then they have a link to your website on their website. And the more credible that website is, the more popular that person is, just like being recommended by the president versus Vern down the street, the more that backlink is going to matter. So this is basically it. In like two minutes-ish, those are the things that matter most. Everything else you don't need to worry about so much. There's a lot more to it. However, if you focus on this, you will start getting some results. And <laughs> don't make this your core strategy if you're in a large city. I will save you some time there. If you're in LA, you need to really micro micro down and focus on like key targets here and maybe focus more on the ads and focus more on vendor relationships first. Now let's talk about nurturing vendor relationships. Who already has your dream client? That's the biggest question you have to ask here. And the same Pareto principle, the 20% that's going to make the biggest difference is figuring out who already has your dream client rather than you trying to find them by yourself and say, Oh, how do I do this? Like, what are they interested in? You just go ahead and say, who are they already shopping with? Who are they already seeing? Who are they already interacting with? Who already trusts them? That if this person said, dude, you got to hire this guy. He's an amazing photographer. That client would say, okay. And then they go with you. That's the kind of relationship we're looking for. So how to win referrals and influence people. Now there's a book called how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. I'd highly recommend checking out it if you haven't read it already, but this is how to win referrals and influence people. So in a nutshell, what we need to do is make friends and build value first. So if you want to get people to refer your business, do not start by meeting people and saying, Hey, I'm a photographer. I want you to send clients my way because what happened is this person built a business and trust with clients over time. They don't want to recommend someone they don't know at all or trust at all to their clients. So you're wasting your time. So what you do need to do is just get to know your community, get to know other vendors in the area, form relationships, be friends first, be a human being rather than a human business robot who's just looking to get something from everybody they talk to. And be authentic, be legit, and actually care about the people you're trying to befriend, and you will get much better results from this than being a sneaky sneak. So get to know them, connect with these people, help these people, give value first and say, what can I do to actually help you? I'm new to the industry or I'm new to the area. I'm just looking to get to know people. Can I take you out for a coffee? Can I buy you lunch sometime? And you take Lauren, the wedding planner, out for lunch and you say, tell me about yourself. how did you get into this anyways? You listen to her story and you say, that's awesome. So when you're not wedding planning, what do you do for fun? And you literally do not bring up what you do at all. They might ask you what it is that you do. And then you can talk about it a little bit, but always turn the conversation back to them. Make it about them. How can you help them? Be interested in them. And that's the core thing about building relationships is people just want to be valued. They want to be seen. 
and they want to be connected with. And when you do that and you serve people over time, you will build relationships. Now, who are we building these relationships with? In a nutshell, the highest value relationships are people and businesses who already have a long-term relationship with your dream client. So for example, if you've got Susie the hairdresser who's been working with the same person, Lauren the bride, for five years dyeing her hair once a month, and they, once a month, I have no idea how often girls dye their hair, (laughs) but she goes in and for years and years, they've been together, they've talked, they know each other. And then one day, um, Lauren goes in and says, oh, I'm engaged. And Susie says, oh my gosh, congratulations. You need to talk to Derek. He has the most incredible photography. Let me give you his number because this guy is amazing and you wouldn't even believe the kind of work that he did for me. That kind of referral gets results. The next most valuable is someone who sees your target client immediately before they need a photographer. So let's say a local car rental place because, oh, I don't know, they are renting a car for... I don't even know why I put car rental, (laughs) to be honest, I guess, because maybe if you're getting engaged and there's a proposal happening and you rent a car and it's like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we just got engaged. And this person's like, oh, sweet. You just got engaged. Let me give you this card for a photographer. It'll give you $500 voucher off of a engagement experience. Bam. You've got a really hot client, someone who needs your photography services right now. That's what I'm trying to get at with car rentals. (laughs) Maybe take that off the list. I don't know. Use your best judgment. Uh, Wedding planners, obviously. The venue itself, after they book, hey, you should check out this person. We have a relationship with them and he gives a free engagement shoot to any of our couples. Our gift from us to you. And lastly, maybe a ring shop. Guy goes to buy a ring. He's probably going to propose. Guy proposes, he's probably going to need either proposal photos or engagement photos. So those are some hot leads. People who need your, sorry, people who see your customer immediately before they need a photographer. And lastly, people who sees your customer frequently every couple of months, salon, esthetician, local restaurants, blah, 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 blah. The sky's the limit here. Don't limit yourself just to wedding planners and to wedding venues. There are other businesses your customers are going to who already know and have the trust of your customers. So that's what I want you to start thinking about. In a nutshell, that is how to build referrals and you do it over time right? This isn't a like, do it a month later, you're getting referrals. This is like a six to 12 month process. The faster you can make friends, real friends with someone, the faster you get referrals. So that's what you need to focus on is how can I create a lot of value up front? How can I get to know people quickly? How can I really help people and show up here? Okay. So that was a long winded thing. We're 47 minutes, well, 48 minutes in. And uh, this is literally everything you need to know. Like, obviously, if we were to work one-on-one and you scheduled a call, we could go a lot deeper here and I could walk you every step of the process. However, if you just took this and ran with it, did some research on your own, 100% you could build yourself this business. And I know it's possible because I've done it myself and I've helped other photographers do it. So if this was helpful, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say and make a commitment to yourself, like what am I gonna do? What is my commitment in the next 12 months? Am I really serious about building this business? And if you are, leave it in the comments. I don't know, share. If you have questions, share. I'd just love to connect with you because that's what really juices me is like, okay, I've done this for myself, it was fun. Then I started this YouTube channel. It was kind of cool. But what really excites me is when I get to hear from somebody and actually connect. I don't know. I'm kind of weird that way. But basically, here's our options here. If you want more. (laughs) Number one, do me a favor. Can you like, comment, and subscribe? I would love to have a relationship and just kind of pour more value into you. And if you're ready, when you're ready, we can talk more about doing something else, maybe buying a product or whatever. (laughs) But there's no pressure there. This was for free, and my goal is just to help people with this video, as weird as that may sound to you. The second thing is, if you do want, you want help getting there faster, you're like, okay, I see the path now, it's totally possible, I absolutely can do it, but instead of 12 months and doing it all on my own, I just want someone to like really show me these are the steps. Every week, someone to be like, do this, do this, do this, do this, to give you the resources to kind of speed this process up and just compress the amount of work. Maybe you have a part-time job or a full-time job and you want to do this on the side, but you just don't have the time to do everything I mentioned here. That's where we should schedule a call. Let's talk, let's see if it's a fit, and it'll be a zero pressure kind of coaching consult. So I will give you information, I will give you answers, we'll take a look at what you need to do, and I'll give you some next steps. And if those next steps include working with a coach, great. If they don't, then awesome. Either way, it's gonna be a really valuable thing. So hit the description below if you wanna book a call like that. I would love to chat, and I have a couple spots available on my calendar pretty much every week. I can't say for how long because that is something that is getting a little bit full for me right now. But that that is my goal here, is to give you that $1,000 worth of value up front. <laughs> and there is no catch. So at the end of the day, if this video was everything you needed, take it, run with it. If you want more resources, you can check out signatureedits.com. I've got a ton of pricing guides and templates and contracts and things that are really going to help you speed up this process. And if you really 
really want to get serious about this, build a six figure business in the next 12 months, reach out, book a call. Let's talk. I'd love to connect. So with that said, I wish you luck and see you next time. Peace.